Artificial intelligence is not to be trusted when the risks and stakes are too high. The growing advancements in AI are progressively amplifying the scope and reach of autonomous systems. These have been in operation since the 70s. However, AI cap capacities include now data analysis for target acquisition and facial recognition software and beyond. In November 2018, the United Nations Secretary General, Antonio Guterres, stated, For me, there is a message that is very clear. Machines that have the power and the discretion to take human lives are politically unacceptable, morally repugnant, and should be banned by international law. The talk about killer robots is highly emotive. It conjures up images of the Terminator, the fully autonomous robot uh, as a relentless killing machine. There is an abundance of sci-fi movies and books that depict a future where robots roam about killing humans. Can this be a possible future? The short answer is yes. Some say that talking about the problem of killer robots in the future may distract from what is already happening now which is greater autonomy in current existing systems. We do not have movie type Terminators um, yet, but we are on the road towards more autonomous systems in all areas of society, including in the military and warfare. And the journey here includes, unfortunately, the weaponization of AI, a set of technologies that could potentially be used exclusively for the common good. The major powers, the military powers that lead in investment in AI are China, I'll put the European Union in general, but some countries within it um, more so, um, South Korea, Russia, the United States, the United Kingdom, followed by India and Israel. They are actively pursuing and already deploying AI to enhance their military operations. Overall, there is very little public scrutiny uh, and debate about the expenditure, except within the European Union, where there is more of an awareness and public debate. Um, the European Parliament does a good job in, uh, in bringing that up um, a lot. It's essential to bear in mind, though, and this is very important, um, not all already deploying autonomous systems, autonomous weapons integrate AI, not at all. And some AI-enhanced military robotic systems are not autonomous weapons. They are used for different functions, such as surveillance, object recognition, navigation, which is takeoff and landing, um, intelligence, detection of explosives, which is very useful. So these are all military uses that are beneficial. The problem, however, are other aspects of the militarization of AI and indeed uh, are hugely contentious and debatable. These aspects are viewed as destabilizing to international security as well as raising fundamental legal and ethical questions. These aspects are equivalent to weaponizing AI. What do I mean by that? Well, the use of autonomous systems and many of them increase, increasingly amplified by AI for targeting identification, tracking, image discrimination, and target engagement, which are called the critical functions of weapon systems. I argue for you that the militarization of AI, especially in the absence of any oversight rules and agreed global norms under international law, is a developing phenomenon already occurring that is going to impact international relations in three ways. The first is the militarization of AI will mean higher risks for global stability. Second, an ongoing military race is already underway. Third, the weaponization of AI will disrupt peace and security. The overall architecture of peace is based upon the regulation of the use of force and the accompanying norms 
associated with the peaceful settlement of dispute, like negotiation, mediation, arbitration, adjudication through courts. And we can see the, the harmful effects of the non-observance of the norm against the use of force in the case of the war against Ukraine, Ukraine, for example. Autonomous systems challenge the basic human-centered assumptions set by international law, the central, centrality of human decision-making, make, attributable wrongdoing for human actions, and the protection of human dignity. How can you hold a robot or a software accountable? Hard to say. AI systems will also be abundant in the battlefield in a way that is different from other previous technologies, for example, such as let's take nuclear weapons. AI technologies will not be employed in one weapon system, as a nuclear head is, for example, but rather integrated across different functions and parts of different systems and operations. The development and acquisition of nuclear weapons has been confined to a small group of states, and this is not the case with AI. AI is ubiquitous, is pervasive throughout many sectors of society, from the personal uh, aspect to the governmental level, multiple sectors, the private sector, etc. Stuart Russell, professor at Berkeley, the lead, one of the leading AI scholars in the world, says many hands hold AI cards. So this is very different than previous technologies and means of, of warfare. Let's look at ethical and legal matters. Let's look at five issues. The first issue is excessive spending. During the pandemic, a, a total, a record of $2 trillion was spent uh, in new weapon systems and new military systems. Um, and that was the case in 2019, right before the pandemic, and another $2 trillion in 2020. So what I argue for you is if you weaponize yet a new technology, as AI is, 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 is the case at hand, we'll have more diversion of money and, and uh, economic firepower that could otherwise be used for the common good. The second issue is wars without casualties for the technologically advanced powers. So what's happening with the use of these technologies is uh, the, the perpetrator of wars is removing itself further and further from the victims of war. So, of course, here we can also ask, do arms, more arms, weaponization of technology, do they promote greater security? Are you feeling safer that your country is weaponizing AI or are you feeling safer that your country is actually tackling climate change and preventing the next pandemic? So here we see a developing phenomenon that is the superpowers are not standing up to scrutiny. The quest for wars without casualties, you know, represent a failure of moral standards by the powerful uh, over the technologically dispossessed. The third issue is state responsibility and international criminal responsibility. Who will be responsible for violations against human rights, against especially international humanitarian law, which is the laws of war that set the rules of what can happen or not. So here, the, the role of the International Committee of the Red Cross, the guardian of the laws of war, is very important and key for, all, for the understanding of these matters. So it's going to be very hard to hold, to hold a software or a robot accountable. The fourth major issue is starting a war starting war, starting conflict will, make, will be made easier. Right now in international law, the threshold for starting a war is set very high. So let me give you a concrete example. Take unmanned uh, aerial vehicles, commonly known as drones. Drones, for example, well, this, the United States started using them in 2003 in Iraq um, and their use grew more widespread, and now there are about a hundred countries that have the technology, which is used for many common good purposes. But when this technology of unmanned aerial vehicles is weaponized, like for drones with a with a human in the loop still, then uh, that that's where we we have some um, ethical and legal questions. So. As we can see, the drones by the United States, for example, used against countries that 
we're not at war with is what is problematic. So what we've seen as a result is a lowering of the threshold of when war can start. And this is already disrespecting international law and commonly agreed rules of when war should start or not. The last issue is the loss of the common good. To what extent should AI be applied in the military arena or should it be solely confined to enhancing and promoting the common good of humanity and tackling the actual non-military issues that are affecting humanity right now very urgently, as the scientists are saying. <clears throat> so in this, at this point, I think it would be important for us to look at previous models of global cooperation successes where we can draw lessons from what has happened before, illuminating um, uh, examples of how states have cooperated in the past so successfully. I looked at a ton of examples from healing the ozone layer, ocean protection, also previous examples of cooperation in the area of containing chemical weapons, nuclear weapons, landmines, cluster munitions. So let's delve into these inspiring concepts and diplomatic successful avenues that nations and leaders drill on to prevent human suffering, avert catastrophe, or to prevent the misuse of the common areas of the planet, which is another area that I have written um, about. So the lessons learned here. So let's look at the case, um, for example, of ocean protection. The oceans are protected under um, the United Nations Convention on the Law of the Sea of 1982, uh, which just celebrated a big birthday. And of course, here we see the creation of a constitution for humanity. It's probably one of the most successful treaties, one of the most important foundational international law treaties right after the United Nations Charter. And here we have the provision of a legal order for most of the planet as the oceans constitute 70% of the planet. We also have here an equitable framework between the developing and the developed countries where the developing countries get to benefit from the rules set by the International Seabed Authority, which is just one of the many institutions um, coordinating norms among states in, the, in ocean protection. The other example I'd like to bring to you is outer space cooperation. This is a a small branch of international law, a handful of treaties that set very exciting norms of respect, solidarity and cooperation. Here we see, for example, the astronaut is a common, um, is a common friend for all humanity. Here we see an area where no weaponization is possible, no arms race. So cooperation among happens among even uh, enemies on Earth. So it is an area that is inspiring, equivalent to Antarctica, for example, also an area that is um, an area of peace for all humanity to cooperate. A last example in this area, in this general area of protecting uh, the planet and the common good would be the, the prohibition of nuclear tests. This is also an area where scientific cooperation is at the forefront. We have a strong monitoring system um that alerts the states alerts uh, the international community when um when a test occurs so all these examples tell us that you know the creation of spheres of peace is possible you can think about the nuclear weapons free zone um committees for peace precautionary frameworks to avoid war are possible and have been successful um and also frameworks to heal the planet Oh, in all these frameworks, I, 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 I really indeed see the essential role of scientists in charting the course and leading the way. So in other areas of that I studied from the lessons of previous prohibitions and limitations on means and methods of warfare, um, I see also a lot of lessons we can take. So, for example, the, the prohibition against chemical weapons, the prohibitions against landmines that were widely used during the Cold War, the prohibition against nuclear weapons more recently in 2017 that won the Nobel Peace Prize. 
in all these instances of global cooperation, we see examples of prevention of bodily harm, prevention of conflict, the, the dual use, civil military uses of technology regulated under international law, and also the prohibition and regulation of certain behaviors, which is going to be essential in the case of AI as the machine uh, human interaction is what is um, essential here. There are many possibilities from, from studying previously existing successful global cooperation cases to deal with the impending challenges posed by the increased uh, militarization of AI, possibilities for forging solidarity and cooperation again.